Good morning, Good morning Houston. That voice is music to my ears. Thank you very much. Good morning, Tom and Discovery. Good morning. And I can't wait to uh, see that singer. I agree. Discovery Houston for Tom. Go ahead, Kurt. Uh, good morning, I think. Um, for us down here it is, and the uh, folks out here watched the SES checkout in Hot Fire and they did a splendid job, and we have a few words concerning uh, weather for tomorrow and our plan of attack. We have about a couple minutes to do that, so if you're ready to copy, I'll get this before the ZOE. Go ahead. Okay, the plan attack from management is to try um, the two opportunities in the KSC tomorrow. We will not have Edwards support. Uh, Edwards weather looks great for uh, the duration of the mission uh, right now. KSC tomorrow, um, the forecast is go with a slight chance of maybe uh, 2,000 broken, but um, we're still looking at that. That's on the first opportunity. On the second opportunity, it looks um, a solid go. Uh, with uh, about 2,000 scattered, 25,000 scattered, and uh, five miles vis with uh, maybe a slight chance of uh, some ground fog early in the morning, as you expect, and with uh, winds up to maybe about 10 knots. But uh, it's looking good for tomorrow, and we plan to get you on the ground uh, on the first attempt, if not that, the second one. And we got about a minute and a half to ZOE if you have any questions. That sounds good to us, Kurt. We have no questions, and we have uh, message 82 Alpha on board. Okay, we copy that. It should be uh, 82, 83, and 85 up there somewhere, so um, probably on the other side of the ZOE, if you find those, we'll uh, expect some feedback. And other than that, we'll see you tomorrow morning, uh, bright and early, for the old entry stuff. Okay, we do have message 83 and 85 Alpha. Talk to you tomorrow. Okay, Tom, thanks very much, and we'll see you. and I'd like to address this question to Mission Specialist Nancy Curie. Good morning, Nancy. Uh, Nancy, the question I have, did you ever look over my shoulder when we were taking <laughs> tests in Cal class with Ms. Chavis, uh, say, about 18 years ago? <laughs> Mrs. Chavis was one of my favorite teachers, and in fact, she was at my last launch holding hands with my dad during the launch of uh, Endeavor two years ago. Oh, I'm glad to hear that right there. Anything you'd like to say to all your friends back in Troy right now? Well, I actually spoke to Hook Elementary School in Troy yesterday, and they were the winners of the uh, Nancy Curry uh, Mathematics and Science Award for their StarX experiments, the ham radio experiments. So I got to speak to about 12 of the kids and answer some of their questions, and it was wonderful. Can't wait to go home and meet them in person. Now, Nancy, you've been doing a lot of that. You've been uh, teaching kids on this mission, talking to a lot of school kids, like you said, in Troy yesterday. What do they want to know about the mission, about what you're doing up there? I think what I'd like most people to take away is the important science that we're doing in addition to the communication satellite deployment that we did on the first day. So it just demonstrates the versatility of the space shuttle and all that we can do in an eight-day mission. Now, you guys had a little scare up there. Didn't you have an impact with some kind of uh, space debris or meteorite? 
if you keep moving the mic. <laughs> yeah, we had a, this is Kevin Kriegel. Uh, we had a micro meteorite uh, hit on my uh, side of the window. It's very small near the, the top corner, and it uh, will have no consequence uh, on reentry. That must have been pretty scary, though. Imagine being yeah. smacked in space by something like that. I can't imagine. Now, Nancy, this is your second mission. Back to you again. A veteran right now, I guess you could probably call yourself. What have you learned or experienced this time that maybe you didn't experience before? Well, actually, in my first mission, I didn't have very much window time because we had a HAB module in the back where we had 22 experiments, and we were working on those uh, extensively. I've had a little bit more window time uh, this time, not very much, though, and I'm hoping to catch a little bit tonight before uh, our last night on, on orbit. So window time meaning that you actually get to see out the window? Is that what you're talking about? Explain that to us. Yeah, believe it or not, down here on the mid-deck, all we have is a side hatch window, a very small window to look out, and due to the attitude of the orbiter many times, it's not all that great of a view, because normally we're flying with the payload bay of the shuttle down towards the Earth, so the overhead windows on the flight deck give a tremendous view of the world. Okay, now, Nancy, do you consider yourself a role model, and what would your advice be to young people who may want to become astronauts? I'm not sure about the role model part. I always look back to my days in Troy and uh, with teachers like Mrs. Chavis and uh, my biology and chemistry teachers and uh, many of those who are again at my launch. And I think when teachers take an interest in a student and encourage them, that, that means so much. And all I'd say to students is give it a thousand percent, enjoy what you do, no matter what you do, whether it be an artist, an architect, or an astronaut. So Nancy, you never looked over Brian's shoulder in Cal's class, did you? No, I can't say that I did. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so either. All right, thank you all for joining us. Oh, one other quick question sure. I have for Nancy. 20th reunion coming up in two years. Are you going to make it? I hope so. I understand we had a high school reunion at the launch, but unfortunately we were delayed at the last minute due to some uh, damage to our external tank, and so many of the uh, folks had a reunion without a launch. Well, we'll have a big one for you when you come back for the 20th. Nice okay. talking to you. Thank you, all of you. Thank you for joining us. We hope you have a safe flight home. Discovery, the next station you will hear from is WJW in Cleveland. The next voice you will hear will be WJW in Cleveland. Good morning, Discovery, from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame city. How are you all this morning? Oh, we're fine. Welcome aboard Discovery. We're just now approaching the west coast of Africa, 160 miles above the Earth. Commander, if you would, could you give us a wrap-up of how the week has been for you? Well, our week uh, in this mission started with a fantastic launch. We launched uh, almost uh, within a minute of being on time. The ascent was extremely smooth. Our first day in orbit was our most challenging and most rewarding. We deployed the primary objective, which was the tracking of data relay satellite, and then we immediately went into the activation of a series of experiments, which are just now completing today and tomorrow. And we're looking forward to a smooth entry and landing tomorrow morning and Friday or in Florida. Mary Ellen, we know this is your first time up in space. What is uh, the strongest impression you will bring back to Earth? The strongest impression that I've gotten is just how beautiful the Earth is and, and it, how fragile it is, or at least as fragile it appears. Uh, we've, had a lot of look, uh, we've had a lot of looks at different parts of the world and, and, uh, and seeing the effects that we're having on the environment, and that definitely has left an impression on me. Don Thomas, I know that uh, in a sense what you're doing here is living out a dream, a reality of a goal. What message do you send to young people back on Earth about obtaining their goals? I wanted to be an astronaut since I was about six years old. I watched uh, Alan Shepard go up in 1961 on May 5th, and uh, next year I watched John Glenn go up also. And th those were my role models, and uh, they motivated me to do my best in school and just work hard towards achieving your dream. And I, that's what I tell kids today. Just never give up on your dream. Keep working towards it. And if you have a setback along the way, that's all right. Just pick up the pieces and move on, but keep trying. 
Kevin, up there, you've uh, been in such close contact. Do you think you will ever want to see another Ohioan again? I'll tell you what, if there are any been like these four here, I sure would. Very good. Nancy, uh, earlier in the week we saw some video coming back of lightning from outer space. If you could, could you describe to us what it is like to see from way up there? Yeah, it's interesting that you asked that. Don and I were just looking at that this morning and last night. And, and when you see a lightning storm from orbit, it almost looks like there's static electric charges setting up in a field. So you'll see it jump from one place to another. And the stark contrast between the blackness that you see and the lightning storms is just incredible. The other interesting thing is that you can see fires uh, burning red glow on the ground during the night pa passes. Tom, this is your second time in space. What are some of the luxuries you get the second time around? The second time around, I got to uh, ride ascents up on the flight deck, which I didn't do on my first mission. So I was a member of the ascent team, and uh, that was an incredible thrill to be able to look out the overhead windows. Uh, I saw the main engine starting, and... Uh, I could see part of the flames when we were getting uh, close to orbit uh, through the overhead windows, and that was just a spectacular view. And, Commander, as you get ready to return to Earth, what are some of the final things you prepare to close up shop with? Well, this morning we completed our flight control checkout and made sure our reaction control jets were working fine. The remainder of the day we will finish up the experiments that will be stowed for entry, We'll do some housekeeping and make sure everything is ship shape so that uh, when we wake up tomorrow, we can go right into the seats and begin re-entry preparation. And, Don, one last thing. Have you been getting the tribe scores up there? I have not heard uh, how they've been doing since we've been up there for the last week, but I assume they're pulling further and further ahead of the pack. Yeah, that's exactly right. They're doing fine. We wish you a very safe return, and we can't tell you how proud we all are. Thank you very much, and this is WJW-TV Clear. Discovery, the next station you will hear from is WCMH in Columbus. The next voice you will hear will be from WCMH in Columbus. Tender, Pilot Kevin Kriegel, Mission Specialist Dr. Donald Thomas, Major Nancy Curry, and Mary Ellen Weber. They join us this morning. Good morning, everybody. Can you hear us? Good morning. Welcome, upon, welcome to Discovery. Well, thanks for taking the time to chat with us. Yesterday, we all heard about the meteorite that hit the shuttle. Obviously, some scary moments for you guys. Can you tell us about that? Uh, actually, it occurred when we were asleep, and we didn't notice the impact point until we looked out that window during a morning uh, sighting of a target on the ground, and it wasn't that scary at all to us. It's... Uh, it looks like a dirty window with a, um, a chip out of it. So th we don't think there's any uh, threat to the vehicle or us, and there really was uh, no impact to the operation here. That's good. You know, your flight, as you know, has been dubbed the Buckeye Mission. Four of you are from Ohio. And I covered Neil Armstrong's homecoming in Wapakoneta near my hometown, also Nancy Curry's hometown of Troy. Um, why so many Ohioans have been in space? I think last count, 21 or so. What accounts for that? Well, part of it is uh, what you see in the wall behind us. If we'll uh, spread a little bit, I think we give uh, credit to uh, the schools of Ohio. They produced uh, more astronauts than any other state in the Union, and it was just coincidence that uh, all four of us were assigned to this particular flight. But when you consider that Ohio does have the most, it was going to happen sooner or later. You know, 26 years ago today, man first walked on the moon. That man was uh, Neil Armstrong from Wapakoneta. This question goes out to any of the crew members. Uh, what are your thoughts about being up in space right now on this uh, historic occasion as Ohioans? I had the great fortune of being on STS-65 last summer and spending the 25th anniversary of Neil Armstrong's first step on the moon on the space shuttle Columbia. So to be up here again on the 26th anniversary is an, another great uh, event for me, and I hope we can continue this every year.
This is Mission Control Houston as we continue to receive live downlink pictures of the space tissue loss experiment on board the shuttle Discovery. Uh, spacecraft communicator Mark Garneau informing the crew on board that uh, coming up on the next orbit we're expecting to have contact with uh, the crew of the STS-69 mission which is in Florida preparing for an August 5th launch. Uh, that will be the wake shield deployment and retrieval mission. We have you all on the flight deck, Discovery. And is the flight surgeon available? Surgeon is ready. Okay, we just wanted to express our personal thanks and also on behalf of the astronaut office to thank Dr. Larry Pepper for his years of service to the astronaut office. He has conducted the, what we call the PMC, the private medical conference. This is the first uh, public medical conference. And Larry, we're just wondering how you're going to do. Uh, we know that uh, you're off to a higher calling. You're off to be a missionary doctor in Uganda, and we're going to miss you. And we, from the STS-70 crew, appreciate the care that you've given us and our families. You've kept us in good shape to this flight, and we're looking very forward to seeing you in Florida tomorrow. Larry, I just, on behalf of myself and my family, I just want to thank you for the great job you've done on this mission and all the other ones. And I want you to know that every time we fly over Africa in the future on other missions, we'll be looking down for you and thinking about you. I echo those uh, sentiments there, Larry. And I also hope that uh, while you're in Africa, you take the time to work on your softball, because uh, one of these days we uh, hope you come on back and get back on the team. And Larry, Tom Ross, as long as I've been at NASA, you've been here too, and uh, I can't tell you how much uh, I appreciate all the help that you've been, not only to myself, uh, but to my little girl, uh, Steph, and uh, we're really going to miss you, and we really admire you for what you're about to do. Uh, I've heard that from many, many people, uh, it's just the supreme admiration for what you're about to go do, so best wishes to you, but we're going to miss you a lot. Larry, thanks for all your concern, and and your professionalism. It's really been great having you as our flight doc, and I have to uh, I have to agree with Nancy. That's just an outstanding, incredible adventure your whole family's going on, and I know, I know you'll get a lot of rewards from it, but thank you. That concludes our presentation. Roger, Discovery, and Surgeon copied all. This is Discovery in the blind. I understand you can hear us. It's good to be uh, talking to the current Prime crew. And we understand that you watched our launch with our spouses. And we hope we have the pleasure of doing that uh, with your spouses and girlfriends in a couple of weeks. And uh, I think the folks here at the Cape have uh, set an example with this Discovery flight for Endeavor to follow. Discovery has been performing flawlessly. And we especially like to thank the folks that work so hard repairing the ET force, uh, the folks from Martin Tycall getting the SRBs ready, Lockheed Martin for the launch processing in the ET, and Pratt Whitney and Rocketdyne for putting together the Block 1 team. It's performed uh, extremely well. Can you hear me now? appreciate those good words, the people that have done so much work to make your flight so successful. And, uh, yeah, we'd love to have you escort our uh, wives and girlfriends next week, and uh, or next two weeks, and we hope to watch you come down with them again tomorrow. Okay, Dave, we can uh, hear you loud and clear now. Endeavor or discover you're coming in broken, but we're looking forward to seeing uh, you, Dave, and Ken, and Jim, and Jim, and Mike, when we get back, and uh, we'll be doing what we can to support your flight, and I hope uh, your TCDT is going well. Again, please pass on our sincere thanks to the folks at the Cape, and we'll be down there to uh, thank them ourselves here in a couple of weeks.